I think something we all have in common was that we took a big leap leaving BuzzFeed full time. And then we all had these like dreams and ideas and hopes and then like COVID it and we were all like, oh, it would have been nice to have a salary job in health insurance right now, huh? Okay. Hi, my name is Kelsey Dara and I am 30 years old. My name is Jasmine and I am 30 years old. Hi, my name is Freddie and I am also 30 years old. So we all used to work at BuzzFeed and we all have the same job. Yeah. Yeah. I made content around comedy and mental health. Self-love, self-confidence, and fashion. Lifestyle, travel, fashion. currently uh, on the road. I am doing an RV trip, cross country, COVID safe during quarantine. I live in Los Angeles, but for the last three months, I've been staying with my parents in Illinois. Throughout quarantine, I have not left Los Angeles for longer than like a weekend staycation. Even through the holidays, I'm gonna be here in LA. I have been tested for COVID five or six times for various reasons, and I have always tested negative. I have been tested for COVID probably five times, and I've been negative this whole time. I've been tested for COVID twice, and I was negative both times. Do you guys know people that have had it? My close family members had it. <sighs> um, my aunt has it, and it's just, She's also very sick, so it's just not, like she's sick already and then got COVID. So it's just like, unfortunate. That's what happened to my uncle. He was sick previous and then he got it and then he actually passed. So he oh gosh. is being counted as a COVID death, even though we all think he, you know, died because of his condition, really. He was like already sick. I also know a lot of young people who have gotten it in LA and just got over it two weeks. I still feel like there's just still so much confusion in gray area around this virus and testing and symptoms. I feel like every single case is different. It's just, there's no standard, which I think is part of what's affecting me and a lot of others mentally. There's just, it's so much unknown, you know? Yeah, and there's so much that like, is being left up to like your discretion of like, oh, you think you've been better for 24 hours? All right, go back to work. We need to be told these things, <laughs> like just for standards, you know? Yeah. I would say that my mental health on a scale of one to 10 was probably at like a six or seven. Six and a half? 8.9, it was, it felt like the best I've ever been. Wow. I felt really good. I had just gotten sober and was bettering my life in every way, writing the book about mental health. So I would say I was doing really good before quarantine. I was really hopeful for what 2020 was gonna bring. I'm newly freelance, no longer, you know, tied to a desk for um, eight hours a day. I was really excited for this new journey. I was doing okay. I was on the road to being better, but I was still like high functioning anxiety. So I wasn't really okay, but I have coped with it for so long that it felt like I was okay. One word to describe my mental health for 2020 is hopeful. Consistently inconsistent, two words. Fragile. I say hopeful because what I have seen happen this year, despite COVID, all the social injustices, the trauma, I have seen people connect in a way, not only with each other, but with their own purpose and mental health. Even when it comes down to like the election, right? Like I have a couple of friends whose parents have never voted before and they actually went out this time and voted because it's like, yes, we are in what feels like desperate times. And I do think that these are desperate times, but it is nice that like, if this is what it takes to like really mobilize people to like get involved and start to like use their voices in a way that's actually gonna benefit the greater good. That's something that I've been really, really excited to see. I think my mental health this year has just been up and down and up and down and up and down literally consistently <laughs> some parts of the this chunk of the year where i'm like okay that was that was pretty strong and then i look at like the summer months and i was like no that was 
that was terrible. And then I look at other months and I'm like, wow, I was so up. And then, yeah, it's, it's just been like a lot. I really came to realize this year that I have a lot of anxiety and I did not know. I know that I'm cautious when it comes to certain things that I'm like passionate about X, Y, and Z, but my brain would just go into these like spirals of like, okay, well, if I go to this thing and I get sick, I live alone, I have no family in LA. No one can come over because then they would also get sick. So I'm just gonna die alone in my house. It's an irrational uh, thought that is actually really real. The end result of maybe I'm dying alone a year ago, people would be like, oh, you have debilitating anxiety. That doesn't make sense. And it's like, now you have debilitating anxiety that completely makes sense and is so valid. Sense. Like your strength. Oh, if I could just have like an oh. ounce of that back when I first started to recognize my anxiety, like. Thank you. I hope you give yourself that credit to Freddie of just like, if you've been at your lowest and know that you still fight for yourself, that is very hard to do. That's incredible. I'm very proud of you too. Oh. Thank you, ladies. I love y'all. One word to describe Jasmine is fragile. Mother f trail blazing. Nurturing. I want to change mine to that. <laughs> <laughs> One word to describe Freddie currently is better than yesterday. Persistent. When I think of Freddie, I think of home and just like the world being right. Are we supposed to be like making each other cry? What is happening? No! <laughs> One word to currently describe Kelsey is uh, trying. Honestly, this is gonna sound so just like whatever, but happy. One word to describe Kelsey currently is busybody. She will not sit that ass down. I'm <laughs> I think that's really where um, I've been able to find any happy at all is like releasing my first book about mental health, which you both are getting. I've been filming a documentary. I've rebuilt an RV, traveling across the country. How many times have you like reorganized your room? But again, like it doesn't feel like it's my, I'm literally jerking off a plant. I can't sit still. <laughs> <laughs> like I think of Jasmine as someone who is do never stopped. I think of her as like the road runner, but she has like fire coming out of her tail. But I ain't running anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a sachet. I think the hardest part of my mental health has been not comparing myself to others. Not being able to see my friends, period. Trying to understand my mental health. Mm -hmm. Relatable. Financially, I've been working a lot, probably more than I've been capable to. I did not predict that I was gonna have to survive off my savings for this long. Yeah, that's been new. <laughs> my finances somehow have been like, the thing that's, kept, that's like a stability, you know what I mean? <laughs> it does feel weird to somehow sometimes admit that you're okay right now in certain aspects. Before quarantine, the thing I was most excited about for 2020 was Freddie, myself, and the director recording this video, we were supposed to go to Europe to film a bunch of like six videos. And I was supposed to have my first international podcast tour and we had to cancel everything. And that's what I was mo most excited about was traveling. One, my career. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to see changes and two for my birthday. I was really excited for my 30th birthday. My 30th birthday and also celebrating all my friends 30th birthday. Party, we were literally supposed to be on the beaches of Greece on your 30th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to shed like a single tear for that. The thing that I'm the most sad about missing is actually pretty ironic. So I'm sad that there was no Coachella this year. I don't really like big music festivals, but Frank Ocean was gonna be a headliner and he's one of my favorite artists. And so I absolutely was gonna go to Coachella to see him. I miss like musicals, I miss live theater. I just miss the joy of the theater going in like movie experience, I think. The gays. <laughs> <laughs> I miss the gays, I miss dancing in the streets, I miss pride. Before quarantine, my mental health routine looked a little something like weekly therapy. Go to therapy, try to work on myself, but mostly ignore it. 
kind of non-existent. I actually had stopped therapy because I was spending money on other things. I carved out a lot of time for self-care and alone time. Little did I know I was about to get the most alone time anyone ever needs in their life. <laughs> My mental health routine has changed in quarantine. More bike rides, I bought a bike and I go on bike rides, which has been life changing. And then I also got back into therapy. I found a new therapist that I love and I see her every week. I started OCD therapy. I started taking medication and I started going on walks. Maintained my sobriety and I started couples therapy weekly. I am currently in therapy and restarting in 2021 OCD therapy. I am currently in therapy and couples therapy. I am currently in therapy and I don't plan to stop. All of ours is online, right? Yeah. Yep, it's all virtual. I don't know if I'll ever go back into a psychiatrist's office. At first I was kind of like, mm, I'd rather like go in person. Now it just feels super normal. It's almost like, wow, we actually used to go into the therapy. It's a parking, I can't deal with it, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I live with generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, and major depressive disorder, ADHD. I've had these diagnoses for <laughs> Most of my life, yeah. Obsessive compulsive disorder and PTSD. I haven't officially been diagnosed with anything, but I diagnosed myself with being that <laughs> 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 And she's sick as <laughs> y'all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. This is not a joke. I have been in therapy since I was 17 years old. 13 years I have been in consistent therapy. Wow. I went to therapy for about a year in high school, for about a year in college. Now I've had therapy for the past two years of my life. I've been in therapy on and off for the past three years, so since 2017. The most important part of my self-care routine, I'm really proud of myself for starting to go on walks. It's helped me a lot probably regularly trying to count my blessings and think about what I am grateful for. Maintaining my sobriety. So proud of you. Yep. Oh, so, you. so proud of you. That's amazing. My vice this quarantine has been TikTok. Yeah, all the, all the good TV that has come out. Even before quarantine, I just love binge watching TV. So I would say that that has continued, but I would say my new vice has been weed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my love life this year. I am in an open relationship, which obviously had to be closed uh, when quarantine happened. A lot of learning, a lot of understanding, a lot of frustrations, a lot of work. You put this question in here to be nosy. I sure did. I did it for you, Freddie. <laughs> you little secret keeper. Okay, my love relationships in quarantine have been um, diverse. Few different situations. <laughs> but I will say it's ending 2020 on a very stable, good note with a young man that I enjoy quite a bit. Ooh! My libido during quarantine has been, I'll just say it, low. It's been low, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be like, oh, it's been great. I'm like, it's been low. I've like not been horny. Nowhere to be seen. So I would say the first half of quarantine, I had no sex drive, so uninterested in anything involving it. And now, can't stop. Thank <laughs> God. We can just like skip the rest of it. That's all I wanted. I, I know with anxiety and uh, with like how high functioning my OCD is, I'm, I'm not expecting to like really no. be all up in my it anyway. My blood is pumping to my heart and my brain for the last eight months. It has, it has not gone south and yeah. it is completely <laughs> normal and fine, and I'm so glad, Jasmine. I mean, Freddie, we're thrilled for you and your but like. Yeah. What were your libidos like before quarantine? You know oh. me, I'm a All day, every day. It's like hard to get horny when you're laying in bed and that notification pops up that like. X amount of people have died today. <laughs> Family relationships showed a lot of color this year. Fine, they've been pretty consistent with how they were before. 
my immediate family has been, you know, pretty good. Um, but I think all over in general, there's just been a lot of learning. <laughs> I definitely got made fun of a lot for the precautions I was taking. And it just taught me like how much adults can act like children. And like, I really had to be the adult a lot this year. My friendships this year have been eye-opening. So my friendships this year have actually blossomed in ways that I didn't know that they could. Serious group chatting, and all it is is us sending TikToks back and forth to each other. We don't actually talk. So. <laughs> I really struggled this year, not so much with people in quarantine, but just like difference of views and opinions. People that I've been raised around and grown to love and not seeing eye to eye. It's been very hard this year. I've mended two estranged friendships with both women. We're now both like talking regularly, like before, you know, we kind of fell off. My heart is really full with getting those friendships back in a good place. Oh, that's amazing. The hardest relationship in the world is to women friends. It can be the most toxic and yet the best. That's why I'm like, God bless lesbians. <laughs> During quarantine, my career has been completely self-sufficient. Pretty consistent of where I thought it would be. Stagnant and directionless. But you're doing so much. I don't feel like I am. No, stagnant, I understand. Because of everything that has gone on this year, I have learned to speak up and to step up when other people can't to brands more than I was doing before. I, I used to be like very afraid to talk to brands or like turn down money because of this, this and that and turn down brand deals. I made sure many things happened this year for especially black women and people of color in several brands before I worked with them. Another year, I can't even imagine what the f kind of force <laughs> feel. Like it's so yes. cool to see. Something I'm proud of accomplishing during 2020 that I started going on walks. In October, I walked 11 miles. November, I walked 13.5 miles. That is self care, that is mental health. I like don't have an answer, you guys. Freddie, you literally started therapy, recognizing stuff about your anxiety that you've never paid attention to before, because it's always been there. This is yeah. just the first time you've allowed yourself to see it. I've seen the brand deals that you have done. Truly. You've colored your hair. <laughs> you oh, you yeah, went blonde? True. Thanks, guys. Something that I accomplished during 2020 that I want to be proud of for just a moment is like the thing that brought this idea for this video together was that I wrote a book about mental health. And Woo! when I was writing this, I was thinking about you guys a lot. And like, that's why I wanted to have this conversation is because Freddie, even though maybe your front facing voice isn't mental health and Jasmine, maybe because you're like a fashion icon, you guys even just talking about this shit, like whether it be just in like a friendship circle, whatever is so important and means so much to us. Something that I will not be bringing into 2021, being so hard on myself. I wanna leave social media pressures behind for 2021. I want to hold people accountable. <laughs> I feel like there's friendships and relationships and people that have hurt me before that I didn't go through the experience of pain because I just brushed it off. And I was like, all right, well, you can't change the past. So go on to the future. Now you're in control because you know what they're capable of. And in all reality, like I should have held them accountable and they should know how I feel. That's like what a relationship or a friendship is. It's something that I'm still like honestly struggling with right now, um, but yeah. I'm, I'm trying. You're so in tuned with yourself. Girl. I think I could really take a page from Freddie's book and practice more gratitude and like self-gratitude. I think I am 
my worst enemy, the meanest person I've ever been to myself. And I think this year really was pretty transformative in that I'm like, it's harder to be nice to yourself. It's really easy to be mean to yourself, but mm -hmm. it, it's so much more worth it. So I think 2021 is all really gonna be about that inner voice. Yeah. It's hard when I feel like a lot of my bread and butter and a lot of my career lives, it, it thrives and it, it, it's really through social media, but there is a balance that has to be created. And I am always just like a little bit nervous, like oh, I'm not posting enough, I'm losing followers, X, Y, and Z. I'm taking a break, I'm not posting because my mental cannot handle it right now. So it's okay. Relatable. Mm -hmm. The thing that I learned in 2020 that I want to bring into 2021 is communication and patience. Like truly listening better. My resiliency and my true self strength. In like September, I was like literally at the lowest I've ever felt. And it was really. Um, and. But through that shittiness, I knew that I had to do something. And so traveling to my parents' house during a pandemic, it was honestly like, it felt like life or death to me where I had to do it. And then um, seeing a psychiatrist and getting on medicine, I feel like my anxiety was at like a literal 12. And I didn't know like I couldn't move without like having to count something or touch something. And now that I'm on medicine, I feel like I'm at like a six and I'm just chilling. I'm listening to fucking books. I'm meditating. I'm like drinking tea and saying things like, I hope the Lord's with you today. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, I was not okay i was not okay at all and it kind of came suddenly where i was doing very very well on my ocd stuff and then an earthquake happened in la and i didn't sleep for weeks i i didn't do anything so i'm really proud of myself and i want to remember that i will pick myself up jazz you are remarkable like you're a rem remarkable woman you really are even when you're not feeling re remarkable or even when quite frankly like you're not you're literally not moving from your bed you simply being honest and living in your truth and like knowing that you can't leave your bed and then saying so i'm not gonna leave my bed you know like that's power right there yeah that's power and we love you so much we really i do. love you both you are a f fighter dude thank you you just being you makes me a better person you <sighs> existing you are so so needed in this world i'm so proud of you for talking about ocd thanks for uh making me feel comfortable um i think that it's hard to talk about so i'm glad i could talk about it with you guys because it's also like you don't want to bother people we're all in quarantine we're all dealing with you know it's so. never a bother even though it feels burdensome you know sometimes it's nice to get away from my <laughs> and go live in someone else's <laughs> for a minute i'm like what is your <laughs> taste like can i have some <laughs> my <laughs> sucks well thank you to my favorite ladies once again for talking with me this kind of conversation is so vital about mental health even in these times it is important to really take care of yourself kelsey thank you so much can't wait for your book Oh yeah! I'm so excited for your book! <laughs> and please don't forget to order Don't Effing Panic, the stuff they don't tell you in therapy about anxiety disorder, panic attacks, and depression. The book is really meant to feel like a friend that you can carry around with you and, and relate to and write in and tear up and rip out and cry on and laugh on and share with a stranger. So that'll be linked below. So thank you guys. I love you. Happy New Year. I love you guys so much. I'm so proud of all of you.